I, I want to talk about WrestleMania weekend. We are now a week kind of removed from it from when this is airing and super car super card of honor stole the show. I, I sat down not knowing what to expect. I'm not a dirt sheet guy. So I didn't get a idea of like what the setup is going to look because I'm a nerd. I love the ring setup and the lights. I didn't know if it would be a different feel of what we normally got with the ring of honor stuff under the Tony Khan regime. Now, when you were going in, when they said, Hey, do you want to do this? Was that kind of in the back of your mind too, of are we getting the Ring of Honor that I was part of, or is this is this going to be a new presentation of the Ring of Honor that we're going to see kind of a preview of? Sure. I'll give you a scoop that was kind of out there, but it kind of intentionally faded away on purpose. This event was intended to rebrand and relaunch before it was purchased by Tony Khan. There was a logo that I've seen that I like, but I don't like as much as the logo we have now. And I don't like as much as the, the old logo that I have on my shirt here, on my, on my jacket. Um, but there's a new logo out there that was intended to launch on the Night of Supercard that didn't happen. And there was, there was some merchandise that went with it. So those, will, those are interesting. I've, I've asked the, the previous ownership group if I can get some of that merch before they donate it or whatever they do with it. I have been told that I cannot have it. <laughs> so I'm a little disappointed to be one of the rare pieces of merch. But... Yeah, so that's just a scoop there. So that was the intent before the sale. After the sale, one of the most comforting pieces of news was that allegedly, and I'm getting my news from Dave Meltzer, I think here, which may or may not be accurate. He's usually on the money though. Tony Khan's group bought all of the equipment, including the padding around the ring, including the barricades. And when we were doing those, those pandemic era empty arena shows, for me, one of the major upgrades was the stuff like the barricades and the padding and, and that sort of thing. And I really liked the look and feel of it. And we hadn't got to get out in front of a new crowd too much at that point. So I thought it, it was true to the old aesthetic. And I thought it was just a little, it was enough of an upgrade to kind of still make us feel like kind of a little darker, a little dirtier uh, than what you might see for national TV, but still appropriate and still kind of sellable to have on a, on a TV network. So I, that was honestly a strange comfort to know when I read that, that, okay, they bought all the equipment. They included the guardrails, the, the mats, the padding, everything. Okay. So this is probably going to look similar. So this is probably going to look and feel kind of the way it always has in a good way. When I got to the building and again, in a good way, I knew the security guards, they had previously worked with ring of honor. My guy, Sam was there. You know, he's former ECW security for Atlas. So that was cool. He helped my wife out a lot at StarCast. We, when we did StarCast it all in, brought my little, we brought our little one-year-old at the time and he helped her get in and out of the madness. So I'll always be forever grateful to, to Sam. And he was there. So that was awesome. BJ Whitmer, part of the office at AEW, longtime Ring of Honor star, former Ring of Honor office guy was there. Christopher Daniels, um, a new a QT Marshall, knew a lot of people. From ring of honor so that was also comforting to know that i was i was going to a place that you know even if tony khan was approaching it with an appreciation as a fan there was also people that lived and breathed it that could help continue to make it the most authentic it, it could be so uh, a lot of comfort it was like chicken soup you know as weird as it sounds seeing those those gray mats and seeing those barricades i knew that i knew that i was in a comfortable spot i knew that there would be very few ways they could shoot the show that would make me feel like it was different. I knew the way it was set up, it, it kind of had to, it kind of almost had to look like we used to shoot it. So I was very excited that the look and feel uh, was good. We got a de our desk for the first time. God bless, <laughs> God bless uh, our, our handyman at, at the Sinclair group, Ryan Ginley. He made us a cool like uh, gearbox road box desk that had like a monitor mounted onto it. We had an actual desk with actual like high quality office chairs to sit in for commentary, which was an appreciated upgrade. We usually had stools, which at any given time, um, either looked like I was a hundred years old hunched over, or it looked like, you know, I, you know, it, it didn't look the best, but there were some small upgrades that, it, you know, I certainly appreciated. That's no knock, you know, like I said, it wasn't for effort or talent. You know, it's when we were under the Sinclair umbrella, it, it was everybody working hard, pitching as much as we could. Those little upgrades and up, updates made you feel 
you know, made you feel wanted, made you feel important. And they put a little bit of their touch onto it that night. I appreciated that, but I did feel, I felt some comfort knowing that we just had our stuff and they just kind of shot it the same. That was a real big, you know, it was like chicken soup walking in and, and seeing everything was kind of set up the same.